Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll be discussing with you all some basic concepts of chemistry, which will be very useful for all the students in science stream, especially who has opted chemistry as their subjects. And for those students who have recently joined in science stream for class 11, and those who are in class 9 and 10, who wants to build a strong concepts in chemistry. It will also be useful for all the students in higher classes in 12 or in graduating years who still are unclear about their basics in chemistry, who still have less confidence in writing formulas and understanding some of the very basics of chemistry. So, let us start the part one of basics of chemistry, trying to make chemistry easier. So the first topic is radical, a very common topic, but most of the students fail to understand. There are two kinds of radical. We call it basic radical and acid radical. Now how do we get the name or what is the definition of acid and basic radical? Acid radical is the ion formed after the removal of hydrogen ion from an acid. So if you remove H plus from an acid, what is left, that is the anion part, is the acid radical or the negative part. For example, H2SO4, if it loses one H plus to form HSO4 minus the negative ion, this negative ion is nothing but the acid radical. In a very similar way, basic radical are formed by the removal of hydroxide ion, OH minus ion, from the base. For example, KOH loses OH minus ion to form K plus, which is a basic radical. Okay, so if KOH, if we take out OH minus, what is left is the positive ion. That positive ion is a basic radical. So in a very simple word, if we try to keep it in a very, very simple way, then what we can say is the negative ions are the acid radical and the base, uh, positive ion are the basic radical. So that is how we can put it. Simple and compound radical. The acid and basic radical are classified into two categories, that is simple and compound radical. Simple radicals are those which have only one atom. So they may have a positive charge or a negative charge, but only one atom should be present. For example, Na plus, K plus, Br minus, S2 minus, all are nothing but simple radicals which contains only one atom and a charge on them, whether positive or negative, whether acid radical or basic radical. Compound radical is made up of two or more atoms of different elements. For example, PO43 minus, SO42 minus, CO32 minus, you can clearly see in those examples, you have two or more atoms like N phosphate, PO43 minus, you have one phosphorus, four oxygen combined together to give you a common charge of three minus. Such radicals are known as compound radicals. You have other example as SO42 minus or CO32 minus, etc. Now, the next topic, again very basic, is valency. The valency of an element may be regarded as its capacity for combining with other element. Basically, it's the combining capacity of an element and is measured by the number of hydrogen or oxygen atom with which one atom of the given element can combine. Now, how do we do that? In other words, valency of an atom or radical is the number of hydrogen atom or double the number of oxygen atom which will combine with it. So, if you take a specific element, okay, and just imagine that it combines with four hydrogen. So, what will be the valency? It will be four. But the same element, if it combines with two oxygen, still the valency remains four because for oxygen, you have to take the double the number. So, if any element combines with one oxygen, its valency will be two. Any element combining with three hydrogen, its valency will remain three. So it is the number of hydrogen atom or double the number of oxygen atom with which it combines. And it is nothing but the combining capacity of that particular element, which we call as valency. Now it was found out that there are many elements which shows variable valency. That means, or before coming into the variable valency, let us just take one example. Uh, NS3, okay. Now, one atom of nitrogen you can clearly see over there can combine with three atoms of hydrogen. So, nitrogen has a valency of three, simple as that. 
So if I take methane, carbon is combining with how many hydrogen? Four. So what is the valency of carbon over there? Four. Okay. So we measure valency with respect to either hydrogen or oxygen. Hydrogen, same number of hydrogen. Oxygen, double the number of oxygen. Now as I was discussing that valency or some elements will be there which will be showing variable valency. Okay. Variable valency, what we mean is more than one valency. In such cases, the higher valency is assigned as OUS and the radical with lower valency is assigned IC okay in their names like for example if you have ferrous chloride we call FeCl2 valency 2 so ferrous OUS the same iron when it will have valency of 3 FeCl3 it will be known as ferric IC ferric chloride mercurous valency 1 Hg2Cl2 mercuric valency 2 higher valency IC stannous chloride tin chloride okay which is SnCl2 valency 2 mercury uh, stannic chloride okay valency 4 cuprous chloride valency 1 cupric chloride valency 2 so whenever it is higher valency that is nothing but ending with IC lower valency ending with OUS most of the students get confused with that ferrous ferric mercurious mercuric they tend they think that they are same but they are not they are two different actually valency of the same element okay OUS stands for lower valency, IC stands for higher valency, okay? Now, let us take some examples of different basic radical, okay? Very important for writing a formula for understanding chemistry and we'll try to take their symbols and valency together. So, if you take a monovalent one, monovalent means having valency one, you can have ammonium, cuprous, potassium, silver, sodium, all these are monovalent, okay? You can clearly see you have NH4+, plus, Cu+, plus, K+, plus, Ag+, plus, Na+, plus. so all those have one valency, okay? And the name and the symbol must be known, okay? Very, very common in chemistry. Like you have divalent, you have cuprous, cupric, ferrous, plumbus, that is lead, 2+, plus, manganese, strontium, Sr2+, plus, stannous, Sn2+, plus, zinc, Zn2+, plus, all of them are having valency too, okay? If I continue for more, like trivalent, you have arsenic, AS3+, antimony, SB3+, ferric, Fe3+, aluminium, Al3+, chromium, Cr3+, okay, all are having valency 3. And plumbic, again, higher valency of lead, so IC we are using, lower valency we used, the name plumbus, OUS, okay. Stannic, higher valency 4+, again, stannous which we use for 2+, okay, so they are all valency 4. So, knowing the name and their uh, symbol will be very important in such cases. Coming for the examples of different acid radical with their symbols and valency, you have fluoride, F minus chloride, Cl minus B, uh, bromide, Br minus. Now, see a very similar name, chlorate, ClO3 minus. So, see the difference between chloride and chlorate. Most of the students get confused over here. Okay, when we say chlorate, they take it as Cl minus. It's not Cl minus, it is ClO3 minus. So chlorate, bromate, BrO3 minus, iodate, IO3 minus. Okay, now see again another set of similar names. Hypobromite, M-I-T-E, BrO minus. See, bromide, I-D-E, Br minus, bromate, BrO3 minus, hypobromite, BrO minus. All are three different radicals, okay very similar in names hypoiodide or hypochloride io minus clo minus so knowing this different names and their symbols will make us very confident while writing the formulas and doing all other topics in chemistry where this type of names will be involved okay that is how we build our confidence in basic concepts in chemistry without knowing this we will never be confident in other topics in chemistry like we have nitrite NO2 minus, nitrate NO3 minus. Very similar, nitrite and nitrate, but if you see the formula, one is NO2 minus, another one is NO3 minus. Cyanide, Cn minus. Hydride, H minus, acetate, CH3COO minus. Hydroxide, OH minus. Bicarbonate, HCO3 minus. Bisulfide, HSO3 minus. Bisulfate, HSO4 minus. See, very similar, bisulfide and bisulfate. But HSO4 minus and HSO3 minus. Okay. So sulfide is HSO3 minus, sulfate is HSO4 minus. Permanganate, MnO4 minus. When you talk about oxide, most of the students take it as O. 
okay but it's not oxygen it is the radical of oxygen that is o2 minus okay peroxide it is o2 2 minus see the difference between peroxide and oxide oxide is a simple radical whereas peroxide is not peroxide has two oxygen atom having a common charge of 2 minus whereas oxide has one single oxygen atom having a charge of 2 minus that's the difference between oxide and peroxide now we can see a set of three others like sulfate sulfide and sulfide sulfate ate so4 2 minus sulfide ite so3 2 minus sulfide s2 minus very similar name but having three different symbols or formulas thiosulfate s2 o3 2 minus chromate and dichromate again very similar chromate cro4 2 minus dichromate cr2 o7 2 minus carbonate co3 2 minus so when you see all these names these are very very common and most of the student most of them even some graduating final year student get confused with all these things it's basically because of your weak concepts in chemistry because of these things maybe you have always neglected it maybe you thought that they were not important but in one time or the other in chemistry you will always encounter this okay and when you encounter you always feel the trouble that okay what is sulfate what is sulfide what is nitride what is nitride what is carbonate what is dichromate what is chromate so clearing all these things will boost your confidence to another level coming for the trivalent borate bo3 3 minus phosphate po4 3 minus nitride n3 minus phosphide p3 minus ferricyanide fecn6 3 minus see the formulas okay ferrocyanide ferricyanide ferrocyanide ferricyanide 3 minus ferrocyanide 4 minus fecn6 4 minus it's a valency 4 carbide c4 minus is known as carbide okay so that is how we need to know now once we are clear with the concept of radicals their formulas their symbols their valency we are in a very good stay actually place and to write actually uh, the formula of a compound okay so once you know all these things then writing the formula becomes very easy there are two steps in writing the formula first one is that we need to write the two radicals the acid and the basic okay the positive radical will be written on the left and the negative radical will always be written on the right always remember that like let me take an example barium sulfate if I take barium sulfate Ba2 plus and SO4 2 minus so Ba2 plus will be my left and SO4 2 minus will be my right so negative will always be towards my right then what you need to do in step 2 is you have to see whether there is any common charge or not means common number in the charge like 2 plus 2 minus it's 2 so I'm taking the common factor 2 out so crossing the valency once we do that we just cross it so remaining 1 in both the cases so Ba will be 1 SO4 will be 1 and while writing the formula we don't mention the charge we don't write the charge so what we write is Ba SO4 without the charge and 1 and 1 because 1 is left okay after taking two common let us take some more examples like magnesium phosphate so we need to first write the positive and the negative radical magnesium is mg2 plus phosphate is po4 3 minus we have to be very clear with that once we are done with that then we have to take common we cannot take anything common so we have to write as it is 2 and 3 so 3 goes for magnesium 2 goes for phosphate which gives me mg3 po4 2 let us come for the next nickel nitrate that is ni2 plus and no3 minus nothing in common so simply cross it once we cross it what i get is ni no3 2 let us come for the next stannic sulfide stannic is sn4 plus sulfide is so3 2 minus you can see simply we can take common 4 plus and 2 minus 4 and 2 so if i take common it will be 2 and 1 okay so if i cross it sn will be 1 so3 will be 2 sn so3 2 that is stannic sulfide next potassium ferrocyanide potassium is k plus ferrocyanide is fecn64 minus once we actually cross it what we get is k4 and fecn64 minus so what we get is k4 fecn6 next is calcium acetate so we take ca2 plus calcium and acetate is ch3 co minus we cross it nothing to take common so what we get is CaCH3COO2 that is how we do it these are the various examples I hope you now feel more confident about writing the formulas of any solid 
if you know the radicals then writing the formula becomes very easy and once you know how to write the formulas then only going for a particular reaction writing the reaction correctly calculating the other various topics which are related with the formulas will be very very easy okay without knowing this basics you'll never be confident of your answers in chemistry okay so always know this so at the end of this video let us just try to take some common compounds and their formulas which are very common in any levels of chemistry which you are dealing with like alum is hydrated potassium aluminium sulfate formula is K2SO4 Al SO4 3 24H2O it's a double salt of potassium sulfate and aluminium sulfate with water of crystallization that H2O which we write is water of crystallization 24 molecules of it caustic soda is a common name of sodium hydroxide NaOH caustic potash is a common, na uh, common name of potassium hydroxide chemical name and KOH dry ice which we take always as a ice actually it is not ice it is solid carbon dioxide CO2 brine sodium chloride solution is known as brine okay common salt solution is brine NaCl bleaching powder calcium hypochlorite very common okay CaOCl2 blue vitriol green vitriol white vitriol which you can see very common names but if you see their formulas and chemical name completely different copper sulfate pentahydrate ferrous sulfate pentra uh, heptahydrate zinc sulfate heptahydrate CuSO4 5H2O FeSO4 5, 7H2O ZnSO4 7H2O names are similar but formulas and their chemical name are entirely different like limestone lime and slake lime very similar but if you see their chemical name calcium carbonate calcium oxide calcium hydroxide CaCO3 CaO and CaOH2 very much different okay more salt ferrous ammonium sulfate hexahydrate FeSO4 NH4 2SO4 6H2O okay if you see it's a double salt of ferrous sulfate and ammonium sulfate with six molecules of water of crystallization plaster of paris and gypsum if you see they are almost the same calcium sulfate hemihydrate calcium sulfate dihydrate the only difference is in the water of crystallization both are calcium sulfate one is hemihydrate half h2o another one is calcium sulfate dihydrate 2 h2o washing soda sodium carbonate decahydrate 10 h2o hypo sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate Na2S2O3 5H2O hypo is a very common actually chemical used in titrations okay which you do it so that is how we actually understand the chemical name and the uh, common name all the student must know at least this few basics of chemistry to make their chemistry easy in higher classes or to make their concept in, in chemistry very good okay so that is how we'll be talking uh, that is how we'll be dealing with uh, the basics of chemistry once these things are clear then only you will be feeling comfortable with the rest of the topics in chemistry okay so that is all about part one so thank you everyone do subscribe for this channel for explanation on various topics in chemistry thank you